Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Everyone can interpret it as they will. You know, I got a good hearty cool. chuckle out of that. Uh, we're going to see what happens when the free agency frenzy begins next week. But here's how to frame it in terms of the Chiefs' defense. How much do the Chiefs need Chris Jones mm -hmm. to be back to be able to run it back? And would they be still a Chiefs' defense to be feared without him, Peter? What do we say? I think before the combine, we were on the show, after Super Bowl, and I said, I think if he never takes another snap again, Chris Jones is a pro football Hall of Famer. Okay. All right, I think he's one of the best defensive linemen of his generation. I think he's vastly underrated. He's also a three-time Super Bowl champion. But he wasn't the leader of the Chiefs defense until this past season and wasn't really like a vocal like guy that everyone, he's now the veteran guy. Now, Nick Bolton might be the guy with the green dot and Trent McDuffie might be the young up and coming star, but for years there were other guys and it's been this maturity of Chris Jones that now, and this is directly from Spags who I spoke with and from Andy Reid, how far he's come in the last year or two of being like, no, put it on me, like I'm the guy, I'm the leader. I, I, I would hate to see Chris Jones end his career as a Jacksonville Jaguar or Chris Jones end his career suiting up for the, the Tennessee Titans. I'm just naming random teams mm -hmm. over money. Money is abundant. Go go take care of your guys. And if Legarius Sneed, you know, we have to franchise tag him for a year and figure out his deal next year, okay. I, to me, Chris Jones is priority one, priority two, priority three. And everyone will say they were smart. They parted ways with Tyreek when it was time to part ways with Tyreek. When he wanted that money, they moved on, and they still won titles. They have a great knack for knowing when it's time. Almost mm -hmm. like we've seen from the Patriots yep. in other years where it's like, it's time, it sucks, fans were sorry. Mm -hmm. Mike Vrabel and Richard Seymour Gotta are go. no longer on the team. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. And they'd move on, and they'd still win. I think this one, though, like... Call me a sentimentalist. This is why I'm not a general manager. This is, amongst other reasons, this is why I'm not a salary cap not guy. Not yet, Peter. Not yet. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> Missed that window. Um, I'd say this, though. The Chiefs, like, these are the guys who you keep around. Kelsey's a Hall of Famer. Jones is a Hall of Famer. Mahomes is a Hall of Famer. I, maybe I got too big of a heart, but like, do whatever it takes. Make sure they retire as Kansas City Chiefs. All right. Do you disagree, Judon? I mean, I think if you did all you can do, it's time for you to move okay. on. Okay. Tell Peter is wrong. Mm -hmm. Peter Talk never played it. the game. Yeah. I didn't. Tell him. Uh, Talk to me. If, if you did all you can do there, and then they, they don't value what you've done or who, who the player you became, it's time for them to move on. And I, th I don't think the Chiefs would like it, and I don't think Chris Jones would like it. But to start out. But I think Chris Jones going to a different locker room and and being fine. and being a being a guy and being who he is, I think he's going to play how he plays and he's going to have success wherever he goes. As someone who changed teams from the Ravens to Patriots, like, yeah. do you have that sentimentality as a player of like I want to play with one team my whole career? Or is that just fan fiction and all of us being like, oh, it's so it's so poetic, yeah. poetic to see Jerome Bettis and Michael Strahan walk off as champions? Yeah, with their and team. Jason Kelsey just did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kelsey Pretty is cool. an eagle. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, you'll love that. You'll love that. But I think guys are kind of just. He, he got three Super Bowls. He got three Super Bowls there. And so maybe he, if he took a team discount to stay with, their, or stay with them before, and now he's like, okay, it's time to move on. It's yeah. time to move on. It's time to worry about me, not about the Super Bowls. I got all as many as I need. Let's go get some yeah, M's in the sense. bank. Let's go get some M's in the bank, and then let's just go have fun playing football. Let me ask you this. Last M's year, in M's in the bank. I like that. That's, that's the way that I um, talk. <laughs> I you wish know. I could talk that way. Right? Um, Round that off. M's in the bank. So Chris Jones, the beginning of last year in training camp, he was waiting for the M's in the bank to come in, and it didn't pan out. He gets that one-year deal. If you're Chris Jones, specifically with the Chiefs, are you? Is that in the back of your mind still? Like you didn't want to risk it on me last season, so I'm really gonna make you pay? Or is there an emotional connection to maybe what transpired ten months ago? Oh, you know, I don't know. We, I don't think nobody ever knows what Chris thinking about, mm. but uh, I th maybe. Maybe it's like, like, is it? I, I have to continue to prove myself every year. Right. Every year, I lead the team in sacks as as a defensive tackle. I'm the most productive in the backfield. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm wreaking havoc, and then I still like I I still have to ask y'all to help me out. I still have to beg y'all to help me out. It's like I don't see. The, the guys on the offense having to do that. Right. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I see y'all paying the guys on the offense. I see what y'all have done for others. Mm -hmm. Can I? Can y'all not reciprocate with me? 
or do y'all not y'all don't want me here? That's mm-hmm. what it's all about, mm-hmm. You're right? Yeah. I th- I think also like it, it's it's dangerous to compare the Tyreek thing to this because Tyreek leaves and like y- you still let Mahomes work. Like, that's mm-hmm. a that's a Mahomes thing. Chris Jones does his job while Mahomes is on the sideline. Like they they are they might as well be on different teams. We can take Tyreek away from Mahomes and Kelsey. And Mahomes is so good he'll make up for it. Who's making up for Jones? Because we've been watching this for years. Here's how I see what Jones means to the team. So bring up the first picture. All right, this this is the Chiefs as I see them. That is Patrick Mahomes. Okay. You got that's Patrick Mahomes. I like this. Got one. it. All right. Next picture. That's Mahomes. He's the guy. Got it. Next picture. There's Travis Kelsey. He's there. Travis Kelsey, you need him. It's indispensable. You got him. Bring up the last picture. Here's Chris Jones. You want to see Chris Jones? That's him right there. Mm. Now, I don't mean the hair and the eccentricities and Carmen Electra. I mean, he brings something absolutely indispensable to the team. Now, there's statistics and rebounds and sacks and all that stuff is huge. But Mike and Scotty talk about it. We were a different team when he was just out there. He had an it to him. He had a fear to him. People were worried about him. People had to think about him. He would get in Carl Malone's face, and Michael and Scotty can do their thing. Chris Jones brings something to this team that Mahomes and Kelsey have nothing to do with, that nothing on that defense has to do with. You could lose him, okay? He goes, and you'll find someone you can manufacture a few sacks and find. That's Stone Cold Jones. Like, that's his handle. He brings a nasty to the Chiefs team. Like, I wouldn't look at Mahomes as, like, nasty, you know? Like, they don't have a lot of Pacheco's nasty, but they're this beautiful, incredible modern offense with trickery and downfield stuff. This guy could be playing in 1976 for the Steelers. And I think Kansas City needs some of that. I think this intimidation factor, the psychological factor of when you're the quarterback going against the Chiefs, Jones is there. Mm-hmm. When you're the when you're the power forward going against the Bulls, Christ, I gotta deal with Rodman for four quarters. I don't wanna do that. Plus, he's gonna have 18 rebounds if I don't have a great night. I think that's what he brings to it. I think it's really important. They had the youngest defense in the entire league this mm-hmm. year. He's not the young gun. He's the one that raised the median age. I think there's something to that. Like, he's the OG, but also still playing at a high level. Mm-hmm. I- I'm with you. I, I love it. I, I'm a Chris Jones guy. Peter, um, Andy Reid mentioned it in that Rich Eisen show, Sound, where he goes, Brett Veach and his team, the salary cap guys, they're all working. Changes with the Chiefs this offseason that would affect maybe how they go about their salary cap business? Great call. Brent Tillis was the salary cap guru for the Chiefs for 14 years. He moves on, and now Chris Shea has taken over. So this is the first year without Tillis. And you might say, who's Brent Tillis? He's now with the Panthers. He's going to be working between David Tepper and Dan Morgan, kind of overseeing things as far as the financials of the team go. But great point. You have a different contract negotiator with Veach right now who might not necessarily have the same ideas as as Tillis did or might have the same ideas. It just might be a different rhythm and feel with the agent community they're dealing with. And that Tillis, that guy like now known for paying Mahomes what he did at the time and making that a very team-friendly deal. Think about that now. That deal, everyone fell off their chair. Mahomes got what? 10-year deal, 50 million a year. Guess what? That's a bargain now. Right.